Now in Reaper, just about everything we do is triggered by an action. So if I select this item and delete it, that was an action. Or if I cut it and paste it, that was an action too. And we can see all the actions. If we go up here to the actions menu, show action list, we'll see them all in here. And as you can tell, there's a whole bunch, way too many to go through in this video. And they could all be triggered with keyboard shortcuts over here. So if we scroll down right over here, we can see this action for markers. It's going to go to marker one, and it's triggered by the number one key. So if I create a marker right here, type M, that creates a marker, in this case, marker one. Do another one over here, that's marker two. So if I hit the number key one, it goes back to marker one, hit two, it goes to marker two, which we could see right over here, one and two. And we could change these or we'll delete them right over here. If we delete this keyboard shortcut, the number one key is no longer going to trigger this action. We could change it right here or add the same one by typing that key, the one key, and now the one key is going to go to marker one again. One, it goes to marker one, or two, or so on. And we could also open up the actions list using a keyboard shortcut question mark. Hit that. And that also opens up the actions list. Hit escape to close it. Hit question mark again to reopen it. Now, besides looking at the keyboard shortcuts over here, we could also find them with the find shortcut button. Hit this, type a keyboard shortcut where we want to know what action is assigned to it. Let's try M. And that shows us that the M key is assigned to insert marker at the current position. So it's a great way of finding any keyboard shortcut we're looking for. Let's type N, which shows us it's assigned to nudge. So we can use this option to find any keyboard shortcut that's currently assigned. And we could also use the filter over here so we could find our actions by their name. So I type in marker, we could see all the actions with marker in their name. Or we could type in solo, see the actions with solo or mute, and just see the actions with mute in the name, making it easier to find those actions. Now if we go up here, there's an options button or menu. We could choose it and we could see by default, this is turned off, which is going to remember the last action in our filter. With it off, if I close this window and reopen it, the filter is cleared which could be helpful if you want to start over each time. But if you don't, you might want to turn on this option. So when we type in a word for a filter, like mute, shows up over here. And if we close this window and open it again later, it keeps that word in our filter, filtering out the actions list. So it's a great way of coming back to where you left off. But this is off by default. But if you want it, just turn it on right here. And right after that, which is on by default, is to search for synonyms of common words. So if I type in the filter, remove, not only do we see actions with remove in the name, we also see clear, delete, or any names that are similar to remove. Or if we type in delete, same thing. We see clear, delete, remove, any names that are similar to delete, or any word in our filter will also show up. But if you don't want that and you want to see less results, just turn it off right here. And we're just going to see actions with delete in the name. Or if we type in remove, just with remove in the name, which gives us less results, but it could make it harder to find the action you're looking for, which is why this is on by default. But turn it off if you don't want to use it. Then down over here, we've close after action on double click or enter. So basically, besides using a keyboard shortcut to trigger our actions, we could put these in menus or just trigger them right from the action list. So if I type in item volume, there's some actions right here to bring down the volume of our items or bring them up. 
Let's move this so we can see what we're doing. Let's select this item. We could nudge it down 1 dB, either by hitting the Enter key. See how the volume is down 1 dB, but notice it closed the action list. We could bring it down again, but instead of hitting the Enter key, we could double click this action. That also triggers it. Now it's down 2 dB, but again, it closed the action list. If we don't want that, maybe we want to trigger actions multiple times from this list. We might want to turn off this option. And now we can select our items. We can nudge it up by double clicking multiple times, back to zero, plus one, plus two, and so on. We'll bring it down by double clicking or using the Enter key to go down or go up on any items we select. Let's select all three, bring them down with the Enter key or up with the Enter key. And notice, because we deselected this option, it doesn't close the action list. So we could do this as much as we want, going down or up, using the Enter key or double clicking, and it's not going to close the action list. So it's really useful for doing multiple things in this window, as it won't close every time we trigger an action, which we could also trigger by hitting the Run key, up or down or any action we choose. But again, this option is on by default. So turn it off if you don't want the action list to close after you trigger each action. But by default, it will. Let's bring this back up here. Now over here, we have our sections. This is the main section for the arrangement window, but we could also choose main alt recording, which is gonna change all the keyboard shortcuts just while we're recording or some alternate main sections, one through 16, which can change temporarily to change our keyboard shortcuts, and then go back to the main section when we're done. So we could use different keyboard shortcuts with different sets of actions using different sections. In addition, we have the MIDI editor sections, which have different keyboard shortcuts for the MIDI editor or the media explorer which again, has different keyboard shortcuts just for the Media Explorer. So all our keyboard shortcuts can be different in each section. Let's put it back to main. Now down over here, we could create or import RIA scripts or create custom actions based on the actions that already exist. For example, we could trigger as many of these actions as we want all at once and have it triggered from this window from a menu, we're using a keyboard shortcut. So let's say I wanted to delete this item, but instead of leaving the space in between, I wanted to use ripple editing. I could turn it on on a per track basis right here, delete the item, and move this item over before and after. Then I would turn ripple editing off by hitting this twice. Then we can go back to working normally. But that required three separate things. We could do all this at once using a custom action. So let's find the shortcut for deleting by hitting the delete key. We can see this one right here, which is going to remove items. And we can go down here to new action and create a new custom action based on this action. So it puts it right here to start. Then we can type in to our filter, ripple, and choose set ripple editing per track. And we'll put this first, and then we're gonna turn ripple editing off, and we'll put this last. We'll give it a name, ripple delete, and this one action, or this one custom action, is gonna turn on ripple editing per track, delete the item, and then turn off ripple editing, putting us back into normal non-ripple editing mode and we can consolidate the undo points. So all this will be one undo. Hit okay. Now we can see this one custom action. We could trigger it from here in the actions list, add it to a menu, or just add a keyboard shortcut to it right in here. 
I'm going to use control delete or backspace, hit OK, and we can see it right here. So now I can select an item that I want to ripple delete, hit that keyboard shortcut. It entered ripple editing mode, deleted it, and came out of ripple editing mode. So now we're no longer in ripple editing. And if we undo it, it undoes it all with one undo. Try it with this one or this one. Undo it. One custom action at a time. And right down here, we could choose the menu editor, which allows us to customize our menus right here, or the menus in Reaper, instead of using keyboard shortcuts in the actions. All the actions in here can be added to our menus in here to customize those menus. And then finally, under key map, we could export all keyboard shortcuts to a file. We could do it for all sections, just this section, or just selected actions or custom actions. So I could just choose the custom action we just created, go to key map, and just export that one custom action. And then later, we could import them to all sections or just to this section or reset all the shortcuts in all sections just in this section or remove all the shortcuts from this section. So everything we customize can be reset, exported or saved and imported later to be reused again in different Reaper installs. So that's pretty much it. That's the actions list in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Mom.